Music of John Lennon's number nine dream, it is. And I uh, managed to uh, see a great film called Let Him Be. You can see it for yourself at the Pacific Cinematique on Howe Street this Sunday, Monday, and Wednesday, June the 3rd. This asks you to suspend your beliefs for a second and ponder the possibility that John Lennon is alive and well and living in small-town Ontario. It's kind of a stretch, I know. And when we had him in studio before, I think we had a rather possibly heated discussion. A little bit, yeah. You guys were, I was going to um, start yelling at you guys, don't make me pull this car over, you boys. <laughs> the director, producer, and writer is Peter McNamee. Good morning, Peter. Good morning. <clears throat> Good morning, Jen. Good morning, Joe. Hello. Do, you, do, you, do you remember Do you remember our discussion when, when, when you were in studio with us? I, I, I do very, <laughs> very, very much. Very fondly, actually. Uh, okay. Now, <laughs> let's let's go back in time because I, I did watch the film, and I, and I, I got to tell you, Peter, I thoroughly enjoyed it. You start you. off. You start off with. I guess I didn't realize how many conspiracy theories or theorists there are out there that suggest something just ain't right in the so-called assassination of John Lennon. Everything right. from the fact that the death certificate uh, has been sealed to the fact that I guess the trajectory of the bullet holes. I, I, this is almost in the John F. Kennedy assassination. Oh, theory. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I'm thrilled that you picked up on that, Joe, because in the um, in the movie, that animation that um, is there is actually based on actual um, statistics at the crime scene. And if they, if back then they had done a kind of CSI of it, um, you, you know, Mark David Chapman would 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 be nowhere near this whole thing. I mean, it's just impossible for him to have to have done it. Right. And um, having said that, the, the kind of premise of the movie, I kind of put that in, and I kind of use that as the premise for uh, him to kind of say, well, look, you know, something isn't right here, so maybe it is him. And so that's how the whole, um, the whole journey begins. Let Him Be tells the story of two undergrad, undergrad film students who uh, stumble upon, or I guess Tim, the, the, uh, the lead actor, stumbles upon this piece of video that shows somebody who bears an uncanny resemblance to an aging John Lennon and brings the possibility into being that, hey, what if this indeed is John Lennon and it becomes his quest to try and seek this man out? Exactly. And he does so, He does so. I guess, uh, much to the chagrin of his girlfriend, who for some reason decides to accommodate his rather bizarre request. But I like the way it unfolds because it's one of those situations where, and i got to tell you, your actor, Noel, who, who I was quite impressed with, does indeed bear a very strong resemblance to John Lennon. It's one of those where that whole concept could have been ruined if the appearance of this man was too frequent throughout the film. Well, exactly. The whole, conceptually, the way the film is shot, I wrote it, shot it, and produced it, all from the perspective of this young filmmaker. So it's not like a glossy, high-def, super-duper 35 mil thing. He, he's somebody who, um, who uses... And as he says in the movie, I, I want to shoot every single moment. I don't want anybody ever coming to us and saying, well, that didn't happen or that isn't true. So he wears, these, he wears a hat cam. He has these hidden cameras. And so those kind of moments in the beginning where they inadvertently kind of stumble upon Noel, I mean, they're, um, they're kind of... In my mind, that is what would happen. I, I don't know if you ever, <clears throat> if you had ever seen the Imagine movie. Um, in one of the scenes in the making of Imagine, there was this, um, there was the, the scene where somebody comes up to John and says, there's this guy who's been sleeping in the garden for the like, three, last three or four days, and he wants to talk to you. So John and Yoko kind of come away from what the recording. They go out to the front of the house, and they meet this young guy. Um, who's, he's a homeless guy, and they, they talk to him, and they say, can we help you? Is there anything you need? John says, well, you know, when was the last time you ate? Well, I haven't eaten for days. They bring him in, and they feed him and, and all of that. And so for me, that would be the kind of, the way they kind of gradually, um, and more so Kathleen, kind of um, ingratiate themselves to John, the more open he is to them, and then, you know, they're gradually drawn in. Were you always a big Beatles fan, or in particular a John Lennon fan? Oh, I was I was a I was a huge Beatles fan. I mean, I you know my mother weaned me Jen on um, on Elvis, and then you know after Elvis it was um, it was the Beatles, and uh, and John was always my he was always my favorite. I mean, um, musically and lyrically. I mean, like as we discussed last time when I was there, and you you actually started last year uh, last time, Joe. You played uh, I Am the Walrus, mm -hmm. and that is my favorite Lennon song. So Peter McNamee is our guest. He is the director, producer, and writer of a great film called Let. 
Him Be, which you can see beginning Sunday night at the Pacific Cinematique in Vancouver. It suggests the film storyline basically suggests that 65-year-old John Lennon is alive and well and living in obscurity in Canada. Now, Peter, um, i, I got to ask you, what came first? Your actor, Noel, who... Again, I understand we're going to talk to him later on yeah. in the week, who bears quite a nice resemblance to John Lennon. What came first? Did the story, was it just something that was going through your mind? Did you stumble upon Noel and think, hey, we can no, do some No, no, the, actually, actually the story came first. Um, and the story, the whole project kind of began um, with... Um, um, with uh, you know one of my best friends and co-producer Carol Wright, and um, I was just going to make this little kind of faux documentary. I was just going to throw it up on the net, a la you know kind of Blair Witch type thing, because I mean my you know my creative career is always I've always I've always had to work with thirty seconds. So I had this idea for the movie, and I, I just had a bunch of friends of mine who who actually supported me even making the film, and. Um, and so the, the story came first, and then I, I stumbled upon our Noel, um, and the, the attraction to me with, with Noel was his proximity to where we were. Right. Um, and so I was, um, and I actually, when I originally kind of uh, brought him in to talk about the project, um, I said, I brought him in and I said, look, um, you know, it's a friend of mine's 50th um, birthday party, and we're all pooling all our resources together as a huge Beatle fan. We'd like you to kind of walk in and play. So, but I didn't, because I didn't want to tell him right off the bat, oh, listen, we're doing this movie about Lennon and blah, blah, blah. Because, I mean, there was his character, technically, with, with makeup and everything, there was quite an intensive period kind of putting all that together. And, and thankfully, I had one of the best um, special effects makeup guys in the country, Sean Santum, um, do the makeup for us. And uh, Sean ultimately was the one who said, I can do it. He'll do. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. that was that was the beginning. I knew that Noel musically could cover all the bases. Right. I mean, he's a great musician, and um, he's a great... Um, well, I, I think what's important here, Peter, is that the story wouldn't have the same impact if your John Lennon, possible John yeah. Lennon character, didn't look or have some resemblance physically and, and orally towards John. And this, oh, for sure. And this man really does. Oh, he's, he's amazing. He, he is amazing. I mean, the reaction that we're getting even here in Toronto with press and media on the whole thing, I mean, that's one of the things that... Um, people are picking up on it. Right. It's uncanny um, just just how well he does what he does. Um, <laughs> um, I mean, and, and a number of the scenes, I mean, um, Graham Wignall, who plays his kind of roadie minder, he's actually from um, Liverpool. Right. And uh, actually, the interesting thing with Graham was he actually went to school with John Lennon. Really? Yeah. Now, he, uh, you, you, you said, Peter, that you've had, you've had a lot of good feedback, and I'm sure you will from, from certainly yeah. Beatle fans and conspiracy theorists and all that. A any idea if word has gotten to Yoko Ono? <laughs> 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 no, no idea. What, um, are, would you want word from Yoko? Would you like um, Yoko to see this I, word? You know what? For me, my, my sense is it's, a, it's obviously a sensitive um, right. subject. Um, and we were making the, the movie, Joe, I mean, as I, I told everybody, I mean, it's, um, I used to call it our beautiful illusion. I mean, for us, it was um, the whole thing is, wouldn't it be great right. if, if this had happened? And that, you know, he had survived and he did end up his days in a remote part of Canada, just a little village, just getting together with some buddies now and again and just mm -hmm. having a nice, quiet life and not having all of the, all of the stress and turbulation around being mm -hmm. who he was, you mm -hmm. know. So, no, we haven't, um, we haven't heard from um, no. Ms. Can't, can't the, but I, I, it's funny you mention that, though, because there's a whole bunch of events happening in, um, in Toronto. We have the, the Bed-In exhibition that's yep. happening at the Stephen Bulger Gallery um, with, with Jerry Dieter's um, photographs. And actually, mm -hmm. Jerry, Jerry's photographs are actually in the movie. His, right. his estate um, uh, gave us permission to use those. And there's also there's a play um, that's happening, and, and rumor has it that Yoko may appear. But really? Really? Yeah. That'd be kind of cool. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, you'll, certainly, uh, you'll certainly hear about it. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, Peter. I, as I said, I watched this on Friday night, and I, and I watched it with great interest. It's a really well-done little film. Thank and, you. And I do mean it little because it doesn't have a lot of lush production values mm. purposely. Mm -hmm. But it, the, way, the way the appearances of John Lennon are, are, are visualized, I, I think it really makes you kind of sit there and think, 
you know, this is within the realm of possibility. I'm not going yes. I'm not going to say you've swung me over here, yeah. but but I will say I, I really enjoyed the way the story played. Well, out. thank you so much. Thank you so much, Joe. And I, I I really appreciate you know you and Jen. You know when when we were there for the Vancouver Film Festival, I, you were the you were the first radio interview interview I'd ever done in my life. Oh, really? So um, well, you did all great. my other movies, I'm going to be coming straight to you guys. Yeah, please do. You know. By um, the way, I know that you're you're born in uh, Black Blackburn, Lancashire. That's it, was correct. There, was there really four thousand holes in Blackburn, Lancashire? There was actually, and as I told you, my my grandmother, <clears throat> excuse me, my grandmother at the time was the mayor of Blackburn, Lancashire when that comment was made. Right. And um, and basically it was, I mean. It's, it's, to most cities, the winter there was all these, there were all these um, potholes. Potholes. From what I've been able to understand, all the research I've done, um, John was really great. He could pick up a newspaper article, he could pick up a magazine, he could write from that. I mean, it's like one of the other stories um, I know of him, kind of lyrically, um, was one day he was somewhere and he saw a gun magazine, and the headline in this gun magazine was "Happiness Was a Warm Gun." Mm -hmm. And he just sat down and wrote yeah. Happiness as a Warm Gun. And that was the same thing with 4,000 Holes in Blackburn, Lancashire. He was just reading the paper one day, you know, and yeah. there they were in the studio, and he thought it was a funny line. And at the time, they were putting all these um, acoustic discs <coughs> excuse me, in the Albert Hall, right. and um, they were round kind of like holes, and so he tied the holes in Blackburn, Lancashire into Albert the Hall. Albert Hall. You know, now they know how many holes it takes mm -hmm. to fill the Albert Hall. You know. Peter McNamee, it's been a pleasure talking to you again. Once again, folks can see and Let Him Be beginning Sunday night, May 31st, Monday, June 1st, and Wednesday, June 3rd at the Pacific Cinematique on Howe Street in Vancouver. It really is a good work. Congratulations, Peter. Thank and you so much. And also, Joe, just if I can get this in, we have a website. You can follow us at um, lethimbe.com. Okay. Viewers, fans, and everybody can get in touch with us. Facebook, Twitter, all of those yeah. magical things. Okay. Well, I do encourage people, Beatle fans alike, um, to, to go and check this out because I think you will not be disappointed. It's a, it's a nice little story. Peter, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Joe. Thank you, Jen. Thanks. And uh, look forward to seeing you soon, hopefully. Absolutely. Alrighty. Absolutely. All right. You bet. Thanks, Peter. Peter Magnamy, the director and uh, writer and uh, producer of Let Him Be. LetHimBe.com. It's the website. I, I, I give this a... It, it really was, again, I'm a Beatle fan. But you are a huge Beatle fan, and, yeah. And I have to divorce myself from that conversation. But even if you're just a casual observer of the Beatles, even if you don't even know who the Beatles are, you've seen images of John Lennon, watch this film, put two and two together, and you'll sit there and go, I, I like this story. It's kind of a, kind of a, kind of a cute little story. 904 at Talk 1410. Still have a